And this is a panel discussion of the, the four ways uh, wood turning collaboration. These four guys, not me, but these other four guys on screen, uh, they've been making the same project once a month and making a video about it for oh, nine months now. Um, so being nine months into it, uh, they thought they'd like to have a panel discussion. So my name's John Kelsey. I normally run the Lancaster Woodturners Weekly Coffee Hour. So let's do a little warm up here. I, one of the things I found missing in the four ways videos was I don't really know enough about any of you guys. I'd like to ask a few simple questions. Uh, you know, do, is your workshop inside your house or in an outbuilding? Richard, how about you? Uh, mine's in a, in an outbuilding in a, in a tin shed and, uh, in fact, I have two sheds, uh, one which was going to be the woodworking one, and then I had one which was uh, my clean one when I was intended to start painting and that kind of thing. Um, I was offered a snooker table, so that occupied that shed, and the clean room then moved into the wood room, and the turning, which was running down a lot, moved it into the present space, which is around 8 by 10 feet in feet it's uh 2.4 by 3.5 meters how about you sam what kind of shop where's your shop set up we lived in wyoming for about 38 years we moved up here to billings montana five years ago and we bought a house that didn't have a shop so uh, i had to build a shop it's a it's a 40 by 40 building so i was able to uh you know kind of customize it to what i wanted i've got like eight 220 outlets and it's really overkill. I got four lathes and um, yeah, I, I go out there every day and turn. Okay, and are you living in the city or in the suburbs or in the woods or where? Well, Billings has about 120,000 people and we're just, we're on the West End and we're kind of out in the country a little bit, but about five minutes we're in in town. So it's, it's good. <laughs> okay, how about you Thomas Lev? Uh, well, I have a shop that is connected to the house, uh, just between the house and the um, retaining wall. So that was the only place I could uh, at the time when I married my lovely wife. Yeah, it's a, it's a small shop, relatively small shop. It's around uh, four wide, four meters wide and uh, maybe five long. We actually live, it's a um, park nature, uh, Medvednica, so it's a... Uh, green area you know you can't build anything uh just around us so it's nice woods and everything so it's an outskirt of zagreb the capital of croatia so okay. but you know in just a few minutes we are in a city so we're not far away so it's a it's a lovely place to be how about you mike well, i'm in the northern suburbs of atlanta a place called sawani uh, my neighborhood's on chattahoochee river uh, i have a basement shop uh with in the foothills here, beginning of Georgia foothills, there's a lot of hills and valleys. So there's a lot of folks with uh, big ba with basements. And so I have a walk-in basement uh, and it's it's finished. So it's heated and cooled. And I have a uh, uh, bathroom on in, in the in the basement. It's uh, about 15 feet wide and 45 feet long. And are you in the city or in a suburb or out in the farmland? Uh, I'm in this. I'm in the northern suburbs. Okay. And who makes a living? Thomas Lavi, you make a living with turning. Am I right about that? Yes, yes, yes. I'm a production turner. So uh, the the YouTube started as a sort of a site, uh, you know, like uh, to promote myself, my work and everything. But most of my earnings are uh, from uh, from wood turning. So. Okay, how about you, Sam? Um, I really never have relied entirely on um, woodworking or wood turning. I started out making cabinets and furniture 40 years ago. Um, I spent 40 years in public education as a teacher and a school counselor. So the, uh, the wood turning income is, is very nice. Now, is that from selling work or from teaching? You know, I do sell stuff mostly on Etsy. Um, I've got, a, I've got stuff in a couple little galleries. I got a there's a museum in Wyoming that I have some pieces, but mostly it's YouTube and um, I do classes in my shop here in Billings and that sort of thing. A little demonstrating here and there. How about you, Mike? Uh, I'm, I'm a hobby turner for sure. Uh, I retired early. I started wood turning right after I retired and I never, never in my wildest dream would I ever thought of making any money. So it pays for my hobby and then a little, a little extra. 
Is that YouTube's or selling work? I don't sell work to speak of. Uh, somebody will occasionally buy something small, but yeah, it's primarily YouTube, but it's also the remote demonstrations, uh, local demonstrations, uh, classes in my uh, in my shop, but mostly YouTube video, a few articles along the way, like Sam. How about you, Richard? How do you do these days? You still sell work? Uh, I do. Yes. It's, um, I've, I've sold many of the pieces which have, uh, which you've seen on YouTube. Um, there aren't, there aren't really very many places to sell these days in Australia or around my neck of the woods. Um, I've never done consignment because I never needed to. So, that was a kind of different thing. And reflecting on this, because I was thinking, knowing this was going to come up, I really haven't done any serious production work this century, I realise. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I get a few odd orders coming through. for. I've got an annual order for trophy bases, um, where I make uh, about 10 of them. And it's, it's extremely good money um, for about an hour and a half's work. Uh, so I have things like that. And... I'm gently selling off the pieces I did collect or or retain. Um, trying to downsize, so I don't really want to acquire anything. I've tried to uh, even tools. So, so whose idea was this four ways? How did this come about? It was Thomas Love. <laughs> well, how did he? How did you? How did he talk you all into participating? Well, I contacted I Richard first, and uh, we spoke about that idea a little bit, and then uh, he suggested, uh, I believe, uh, Mike, and I suggested the same, or vice versa, something like that. Uh, but the general idea was, through watching YouTube videos, you can see really bad stuff and uh, uh, dangerous stuff and all of that. And um, I was in a, in a mission to, to help out uh, other beginners to have like multiple ways of um, doing the same thing with different methods of how you want to accomplish, let's say a ball or anything like that. So um, that's the general idea behind the uh, four ways. Well, we're going to look at uh, each of the projects that you guys have done and look at, you know, what the different ways were. Um, before, the, I, before we quite get to that, I asked each of you to give me a, three slides of your work. Um, and that would represent you really. So I want to just have a quick look at that. And so Sam, what tell tell us what why did you choose these pieces? You know, I I think it's a good representation of what I do. Um, I started embellishing uh, my pieces maybe around two thousand and five, which means coloring and staining and different things. Uh, the the top left picture is the metal reactive paint. And I've, I've talked to Richard about that. He does a lot of that. In fact, I've got one of his pieces in my my little uh, display over here in the living room. Uh, I love turning boxes. You know, I started watching Richard Raff and turn boxes in his old VCR tapes, which I still use. They still work after all these years. Um, I, I really learned so much from Richard early on the uh, the red piece on the bottom, I like to do finials. I, I do thread chasing. So the base of that blackwood finial is threaded into the, the body of the piece with inserts. And that's box elder. Um, <clears throat> box elder grows all over the West and a, a lot of America. And it's readily available. Farmers and ranchers don't like box elder. It's a, it's a nuisance, but... Uh, <clears throat> I've got a pretty good stash of, of burl wood. And when I stain those pieces, I stain them from the inside to begin with. I turn them fairly thin, less than a quarter of an inch, and the, the dye wicks through to the surface. And it kind of follows the the burl and the grain in the wood. So there you go. How about you, Mike? Why'd you choose these three pieces? Well, I think they're sort of, uh, they're, they're kind of representational. I turn a few bowls, uh, not as many as I used to. I've kind of grown out of bowls and harvesting larger pieces of wood and having to haul it into my shop and chainsaw it. Uh, that that one is a river river birch. It's probably 18 inches across. It came from a tree in my neighborhood. Uh, the acorn, I, I started threading after watching Sam, learning from Sam, starting in about 2012, 2013, and, and I enjoy thread chasing. I don't do enough of it. Some of it by hand, some of it by jig, but I make a lot of acorn boxes. And then uh, I 
chess pieces are probably kind of somewhat of a representation of the kind of smaller spindle style projects uh, I do. Uh, this was my second uh, chess set. Um, and, and I made the board. I don't do much flat work and I've since gotten rid of my jointer and planer as I try to kind of downsize my shop a little bit. Richard, how about you? I think like Tom's love, I had quite a time wondering what to pick. Um, so I honed in on these because I do like working green wood. So the one on top, uh, the bowl is um, it's got three little feet. So what I call the tripod bowls. Um, <laughs> And I made that, uh, I think, on in Norway on the on the Norwegian wood turning cruise uh, about ten years ago, and uh, it's been used daily ever since. So that's how. And one of my hobby horses is that people don't use enough stuff, uh, enough of what they make. So um, I uh, like to show those kinds of things as often as possible. Um, the um, the what I call the pot, the enclosed forms. That's the one with the verdigue and the pink inside. Uh, I've done uh, quite a few hundred of those over the years. I started them uh, uh, late last century, about, about 97, I think. And um, generally sell those in little clusters and I enjoy making them. I'm not sure that people really think of me in relation to that kind of thing. I tend to be kind of classified as just a bowl turner. Um, but... Um, there's that, and then the other things I enjoy making are the the uh, uh, the citadel, what I call the citadel boxes, um, which really inspired by old buildings and castles and things that look a bit battered. And it's a wonderful way I found of using up wood, which is not much use for anything else. Um, so, uh, and and often you don't need to even have the same kind of wood in a piece like that, provided it's red underneath. That seems to be enough. So. Um, <laughs> And with those kinds of pieces, I'm always trying to get faster and looser with uh, with everything. It's it's partly a statement against very, very fine finishes, which people just seem to be going finer and finer and shinier and shinier and shinier. And so I'm reacting against that with those. Um, but I was tempted to put up a scoop, uh, which they kept me alive in the 70s. Um, haven't made many for the last 40 years, but uh, you know, it's very difficult to know what to pick. I couldn't reduce Thomas Lab down because he makes, uh, that's what he does, is make sets. So anyway, well, Thomas Lab, why did you choose these particular sets? Um, these are uh, pretty much the most uh, that I do. And uh, now uh, the the top left uh, are the, inspired by Richard's uh, flat, uh, or not flat, actually, the, the shallow plates. Um, but I also make them like a flat or shallow dishes and deeper ones for soup and uh, like uh, stews or something like that and uh, people really like those and uh, just recently actually a year ago i started to paint the rim as well so they really like that as well they, it's a uh, time consuming and uh, uh, especially when i have to like um, i rough turn those doesn't matter if they're dry so they just acclimate a little bit better because mostly the, the late lately that I accumulate uh, dry stuff and dry dry wood, it's really temperamental. So try to um, like negotiate that to, to a minimum. Uh, the picture on the right uh, is also it's pretty common. Like uh, often customers ask me to uh, like make the cake stand or um, like a little set of. Um, um, like a platter or um, a chopping board and a little tiny dishes as well, like a serving for a salt or a pepper or anything like that. Uh, so, um, and obviously on that picture, uh, there is a bowl as well, uh, which also represent like uh, uh, the most of the stuff that I sell, uh, which are bowls. And uh, the bottom picture is actually the most sell uh, stuff that I do. Uh, so it's a set of these kind of um, it's, um, six inch diameter uh, bowls. And uh, again, roughly one year ago, I started to paint the rim as well on these. And um, people quite like the, the set of either four or six. And uh, with those also, they, they get like this squarish uh, shallow plate. And uh, on uh, like five or six sets, uh, they also request like uh, salt and pepper shakers in um, like either uh, apple or pear shape so um, this is pretty much 
uh, what I do, um, like many of the times people give me idea what uh, they want to like uh, turn uh, to get and uh, to order. And uh, that obviously then uh, manipulates my way, uh, what I can do. And uh, for instance, the, the lately uh, 200 cups of um, uh, shot glasses. So, uh, you know, people come up with uh, stuff and uh, I just uh, make them happen. So. This is the first collaboration there, the first that you each made, the lidded box. Now, who's who proposed this one? Ooh. I think I did. Okay. Yes, I think Sam did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, what do you guys see in here? What did you each notice that was different that the, somebody else did? Or did you learn anything? Or uh, were you surprised by somebody else's approach? I think there was a stipulation um, that it had to be decorated somehow. Wasn't there, Sam? Can you remember that? I think it was... Uh, it had uh, to have colour or something or other. Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, I so I, I remember I was stressing about that. Uh, I, was not, it was, I was out of my comfort zone, which I think was partly the idea. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, I guess it probably was. <laughs> Uh, but I, you didn't decorate it from what I can see, or maybe you did. I can't tell from the photo. Uh, no, there are some little dots uh, of epoxy, a uh, different color on the top, which is a kind of orangey as far as I can remember. It's not a terribly good photograph. I do remember you had little orange dots in it, but I didn't see in this one anybody doing any particularly different technique. Or am I, did I miss, aside from the decorative techniques, but in the turning process, it seemed to me everybody pretty much did made a approach it the same way. Am I right about that? Pretty close, yeah. Pretty, Pretty close. Much. We were think so, uh, yes. quite quite similar on on, uh, on this first um project. And um but it what it's kind of different is the different design and uh how to approach that design, how to make that particular shape or and uh, holding the the different uh, pieces on the lathe as well. So um doesn't have to be like always like a technique involved differently but it's like a different method of holding or um, just different approach on design or solving a little problems along the way we, we're each going to come up with different designs I, I suspect we also make an effort to be a bit different uh i know is that general i'm not looking at you <laughs> not sure whether you agree or disagree um I know with that box of mine, it's uh, it was a loose lid, and I wanted the lid to come off and be a bowl in its own right. So oh, I was trying to work okay. around that, which I think is what happened with Sam's as well. I've got a lid that sort of sits inside the the base, and Mark Baker, the late Mark Baker, um, turned a lot of these, and I sort of, you know, I don't want to say copied it, but I, you know, I was inspired, and I and I kind of turned it. Uh, along those lines but it's always fun to anticipate and think about what the other three are going to turn you know can i kind you know you know should i say it can i kind of outdo what they're doing and it's it's really fun and it's a guessing game i see mike is is smiling so i don't know what do you think well, well, did you know well, what did the you, other guys were going to do until they done it or you do you find out when we all do when the videos are posted when we, the videos are posted we okay. just have a general topic and go from there. We have, have no idea what's going to come up. So it's a, it's a surprise um, for us. Yeah. Yes. Do, did any of you draw this piece before turning it, or are you just going straight into the wood with a chisel? I drew mine. Um, I very rarely draw. Um, I, I know rough, I know pretty well where I'm going, but um, I rely on my eye as I'm going along. Yeah. I, I very rarely draw anything. I did draw um, my acorn box. I did a video on an acorn box. Well, that was the uh, the pop fit. Yeah, we'll come to that. Yeah. And I've turned a lot of really ugly acorns. So, <laughs> and I, I picked one from uh, Alan Batty used to turn. And I really like that shape. So I kind of modeled it after that, after him. But otherwise, they're not good, my acorns. Uh, but you... <laughs> How about you, Mike? You said you drew this. What did you? What part of it did you draw? The shape or the? Uh, I you drew the shape. It? I had I had uh, found an image similar to this on Pinterest, and then I modified it a little bit. And I had done 
one or two similar ones like this where I wanted an inset lid and I wanted a textured band and then I needed to border that band with a bead to make the texturing pop and then I wanted to a contrasting finial so I used a piece of ebony. Thomas Lab, you told me you almost never draw as well. Yeah, not not uh, much uh, or really rarely I draw it. Only if it's something like really complicated uh, or it's something like interlocking or anything like that. Uh, but in this case, um, I knew that I want to like uh, make a band of color uh, between the lid and the base. Uh, but the fortunate thing was, um, well, I had to do it uh, the other time as well. Um, I believe the base, I didn't turn on the camera, so uh, I had to do it again. And uh, <laughs> that is where I adjusted the design a little bit. So I didn't draw it, but I had to. I had the opportunity to make it again. So, okay. I, I suspect the uh, the need to draw may come from uh, from less experience. I suspect I have fewer hours on the lathe than the other three distinguished turners. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong to uh, to draw it. It's a uh, it's another approach, and uh, um, like I said, I I do sketch something, but. Uh, mostly when I like don't have any inspiration or anything like that, so I'm just fiddling around and or mm -hmm. using a mirror or stuff, stuff like that, and uh, you know just try to see what I, what I want to make. So. so, how did you choose the color you put in this? Uh, on this one, uh, it was actually quite simple. I only have two, so it was either a black or a, this uh, bluish, and. Uh, I had to get myself a little bit more of a range of colors. So, um, <laughs> okay. So that was baked in, in other words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else to say about these? Anybody wants to say? I think I've, it, it seems to me, I, I, I don't know about the others, but I've, I think when we're doing our projects, we're, we're, part, we're more educational maybe than just showing off. So, uh, we're looking for different techniques just to give people uh, watching a, a kind of broader idea of what's possible. That's the sense I get from everybody. It's a quite an effort to, to you know, like a, like a think and a make uh, a product a product like this uh, the difference from the other. So uh, it's a it's a struggle. Like a, I'm trying to anticipate what the others are going to make, so I don't make anything similar. So. Uh -huh. So far, we were we were quite successful in that. So, okay, well, let's look yeah. to the next one. A wide rim bowl. Who who's proposed this one? Uh, I think I come after Sam, don't I? Yes, I think yes. I might have been. Yes, yeah. Well, you um, talk to it then. What do you see here? I, I mean, I'm basic. I've earned a living basically making bowls. I'm not very comfortable with projects as such i've really got to start thinking then you and thomas lab went to similar places but uh mike and sam took quite different approaches even though they're both out there with big lumps of green wood yes yeah. well, I, I i had the possibility of a natural edge um but i yes i can't it's a long time ago and i can't remember exactly the details but looking at these now i think with Thomas Lava and myself both kind of looking to make utilitarian stuff, which we're wanting to sell um, to a kind of fairly ready market, we hope. You know, that's a slightly different approach to the other two, which are going to be much more difficult to sell, uh, certainly in in the kind of markets we'd be in, I think. Uh, the big natural edge stuff or big more flamboyant pieces are much easier to sell in the U.S. than anywhere else, I think. Yeah. I think uh, from my perspective, I, because I'm not concerned with selling pieces, I tend to give them away to volunteers that I work with at, at church and with the AERP Tax Aid uh, Foundation. Uh, this one, I remember when it was proposed, it kind of sent a little bit of a chill because I didn't have any wood on hand. I had let most of my green stock uh, deteriorate or got used up. And then one day I he heard a the neighbor's a uh, yard of chainsaw, I went over there to investigate and they were taking down a sweet gum tree and I said, uh, would you mind uh, chopping a, a, a chunk of that and throwing it over the fence? <laughs> so this right. was this was a uh, once turned green green bowl, so it kind of warped in, uh, nicely and had nice color to it. Yeah. What's your story, Sam? Um, this particular piece in this picture is uh, some more box elder 
And when I turn uh, a burl like this, I sometimes like to leave the rim a little wider rather than, you know, turn it down to a quarter of an inch or something. You lose a lot of that uh, burl figure. So that kind of gave me permission to do that. Uh, I haven't really turned a lot of a lot of the bowls in the lower pictures, the two in the lower. Um, I just haven't for some reason. So it was simple as that. I just uh, kind of thought, yeah, it'd be a good good piece to leave the rim a little bit wider for this project. Did yeah. anybody see a different technique used here in these, as you can recall? Seems to me they were all pretty much done the same way, except uh, two of them were once turned and two were twice turned. I tend to think that just kind of reinforces uh, a sensible approach to turning. Um, because <laughs> we don't, <laughs> yes, we don't, we're not really um, uh, carbide tip turners here. So uh, we'll, I think, uh, I'm, well, I know I, I try to veer people away from carbide um, and just show how efficient and clean you can work with um, with traditional tools. You've been an apostle at that point of view for a very long time. Yes, yes, and I'll yeah. probably carry on until I fall off my perch. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on this set that anybody wants to say? No. Okay. Six-inch cube. This I thought this was pretty interesting. Uh, you guys took quite different approaches here. It, yes, Mike was the most shocking, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising, I'm sorry, surprising. <laughs> I thought Thomas Lab was very clever in getting uh what Excellent, four pieces, yes. five pieces out of that out of the block of wood. That was not very, very candy of you. Thank you, yes. thank you. And uh just to add to this, um a few of the clients asked uh to, to make stuff like this now and uh with um a du double purpose uh, or even like uh, triple the purpose. <laughs> um so that's, you know, you never know what the customers will want the next. So once they see something like this, they, they want like a lid that acts like a plate or uh, anything like that, similar. So very clever stuff. Yeah. Um, Sam, you went for the burl. You're, you're, you're showing off the figure in the burl is what you were after there, yeah? Yeah, that's another piece of box elder, which is, you know, I could just turn that forever. Um, it fit within that uh, six inch cube parameter. And uh, just a note, since I finished that piece, I, I actually, when I was working on that, intended to put uh, an insert in it and a, a finial, which I have done since then, but I didn't show that in the initial uh, four ways video. So it's just a simple hollow form. Yeah. Yeah, that was lovely. And you made, uh, yours were greenwood, Richard. Mine was green because um, I, I don't have uh, any dry blocks that kind of size. Um, because amongst my other downsizing, that includes the wood stock. So uh, I was, uh, you can see they've, they've walked slightly, um, or quite a lot, the one on the left. Um, and if I'd had any decent burl like Sam, I'd have gone for that. Uh, but uh, good quality burl is not easy to come by uh, around here. So uh, my other thought was to cut it up into lots of little bowls and uh, maybe make two or three dozen small ones. Um, but I think it was probably a matter of time. Maybe next time. We'll do this again at some stage. Why did you make two? Um, oh, just uh, for comparison. And did they both, uh, were they both from the same wood? Uh, yep. They're, by the look of it, yes, I think they were both carrot ash, yes. And as I yeah. recollect, you you did microwave drying on those. Oh yes, yeah, and um, that just basically speeds up the process. I mean, I can uh, if you just let them dry out in two or three weeks, or maybe three or four weeks, they'll have distorted to much the same thing. But a microwave, you get it done in about ten minutes. So, um, and you also know if it's going to split fairly quickly. So it's um, it's just kind of. Pushing the status quo a bit, I suppose. Do you ever ever have a fire in the microwave? Not yet. No, 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 I haven't. Don't dry uh, lignum vitae in the microwave. You'll, you'll have a fire, a little greasy. 
Like, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, and somebody made a comment on the on the um, in the on the on the tube thing that uh, they had had one burst into flame after they'd taken it out of the oven. Yeah, uh, it's a bit worrying. I tend to put them in for two or three minutes at a time, and uh, and I want them to come out too hot to hold and steaming. Next was the stool. Whose idea was this one? That would be me. Yeah, it was. Okay. <laughs> and you made a very um, contemporary, like Scandinavian modern looking stool with two stretchers. If I'm seeing that picture right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Like the way, uh, just do it through tenon on uh, on uh, the stretcher itself, but on the leg where it meets the leg, it's just a simple tenon and uh, and a mortise. So, Sam, you cheated, you didn't make a turn top on your stool. This was near Valentine's Day, as I recall. Yeah. Well, I, but in my defense, I did thread the, the legs into the seat. That was a thread chasing project, if you recall. I used I do. cast yeah. acrylic, uh, and um. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, Sam's version was uh, was great. Uh, it was like uh, you can uh, disassemble it, and you know, you know you can ship it anywhere. And uh, it's uh, actually quite good idea for uh, mass production. So quite a lot of work, though. Yeah, yeah. My, <laughs> my little three year old granddaughter has that down in Las Vegas. It's a nice design. How about you, Richard? You made, uh, as I recollect, you, you your tenons were kind of sloppy in the board holes as well. Uh, yes, yes. I, I'm I'm not very good at these things, uh, but it's it's a as a design. I, it's the most successful. Of the I've made uh, four stools, I think, and the others were a bit lower. Um, but this um, this is very comfortable. It's the right height. The only design flaw is that if you want to pull it out from underneath anywhere, you've got to grab a leg. Uh, because the um, the the top is the, the actual seat's a bit slippery and uh, and the slope of it you can't grab it. So if I was going to make another one, I'd put up some kind of bead in there so your fingers would uh, have something to grab underneath the seat all the way around. So your production over the years didn't include stools. I didn't need to. No, no, I, I was always um, had a problem keeping up in the seventies, keeping up with scoops and salad bowls and. Um, then in the 80s with uh, big red gum bowls. And uh, it, you know, it was all I could do to keep up with the orders anyway. I uh, had three really good galleries and um, they kept me fully occupied. In, in with, and then I, I would be overseas for maybe six weeks and uh, that just added to the stress of production, really. <laughs> How about you, Mike? Uh, Have you made that stool before? Uh, I did. Uh, I saw Alan Leland had had some of these at one of the symposiums, maybe the one in it, in Atlanta. And I remember it's like, oh, these are just absolutely gorgeous. So I made a shop stool after that. And and so when we made a uh, when we had this project, I wanted to make another one because it, it is a fun project. It's kind of a Windsor style. Hmm. Very nice. I, I yeah, very nice. Anybody else got anything else you want to say about the stools? I just thought that was a it was a very nice project and again successful. You know that you had four different kind of variations, didn't you? you had the decoration and the, the simpler. So I think it gave people a lot of insights into how to go about making one. Yeah, I agree with that. Embellished bowl, Sam. I think this was your idea. This one. I think it was. Did you know? Did you have you that before you gave us the project, Sam? <laughs> No, I did not. <laughs> but that, that's a good one, Richard. Um, I Like I say, I've done embellishing over the years, and uh, there's a little bit of pyography on there, and I'll give my wife a shout out. She's become a very good pyography artist. She does really, really uh, nice work. But I did a little airbrushing and a little carving, and, you know, uh, I, it, it turned out okay. I wasn't sure. There were Two or three times during that process, I, I went back to a tool and took the surface away. It was it was just I, I like to use the word hideous, and like my dragonflies were not good. So anyway, it turned out okay, and I quit when I was ahead, I guess. <laughs> well, I think that was what made it interesting, you know, because people get to a stage where they they think that's. Well, they've got that far and they think, well, you know, I don't want to mess it up and it maybe could be better, but 
not, but I think by just by pushing it a bit and showing that you can take stuff away and improve the state, improve the situation, is a very good thing to show. Yeah, I agree. And I, uh, what's what's embellished about yours, Richard? Oh, it's the three beads or two beads. Yes, so, well, indeed. Yes, I'm pushed to do embellishment, so it's. Um, <laughs> but uh, the beads seem to kind of cover it. Uh, I, I hope. Mike, yours was a chatter tool, I think. Uh, it was the um, Sorby uh, spiraling and texturing tool. I, I've done. Uh, it's been one of my most popular interactive remote demonstrations, and I, I've always liked using texturing tool and and so that's where i went yes and thomas slav you you made a, a colored rim on that is, is this the one was was it melted crayons yeah it was a disaster uh but i mean it turned out okay and uh i had two of them made um the other one after that i, I thought i could do a little bit better uh, but it turned out even worse so uh so they both sit on the shelf and uh just waiting the day that I'll turn away that rim, so I have a little bit shallower balls to sell. So, what's the disaster? What's disastrous about it? Um, I didn't like. Um, now I don't like work uh, very much with the epoxy, but the top layer of epoxy uh, would really make it maybe a little bit more clearer inside and protect the crayons. Obviously, uh, now they they're not like like uh, rubbing off or anything like that, but you can. You can gouge it, I guess, with a spoon or anything. So uh, I saw the idea actually uh, for a sort of a river table, but instead of glass or epoxy, they use the crayons. And, uh, you know, along the table, you have different colors. So that was the general idea, but didn't work out as I planned. So well, it's a pretty nice piece of wood. What is it? What's the species? Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's English walnut, but it's... Um, uh, came to like a stage of rot almost, and it changed the, the color tremendously. And the sapwood was all all rotten away. It was like a sponge. Uh, so only the hardwood, the, the brown stuff inside was only usable. And um, that was the only thing I could use. But like I said, it changed the color and the stripes are a little bit different. So it was a nice piece of wood. So, so you're going to take the top off eventually, are you? Yes. On both of them, yes. Right. Another video. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else to say about this group? No, I like the way Sam's came came out. It's, it's, it's um, you know, the kind of upright shape. It just, uh, it's not really a shape which would normally appeal to me that much, but I think it works pretty well in that. And it's got the sky and the feel of the kind of, uh, the prairies, I suppose, isn't it? It goes well with uh, the painting and uh, the the yeah, carving yeah. and everything. Really great. Thank mm. you. Okay, this was a hollow form. I don't know who's assigned, whose topic this was. I lost track of that completely. Uh, that may have been mine. I don't remember. Okay. I think so, yeah. Yes, I think so, yes. So in yours, Mike, are those whole, like holes in the side of the piece? I think that is. Yeah, that was a piece of cherry burl I had on hand. Uh, we took down a number of cherry trees at my church that were loaded with burl. So I had a nice piece and I thought I could capture the holes properly on the side. And I was very pleased that uh, I was able to do that. Is it painted inside or is that just a light? No, that's just the color. Okay. The light. You're in the same vein, Sam, with something pretty similar. Um, that piece of wood I used was mesquite, and I was at a wood turning symposium probably five years ago or longer, and somebody walked up uh, with this really nice big slab of mesquite. I'd never turned it before. It had sat there because I was a little bit nervous about turning it. I thought it would be really hard. It wasn't all that bad, um, and it had a little bit of a natural edge on it or, you know, so I, I try to leave that, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty simple, but yeah, I, and I like to turn hollow forms. I usually put a finial or something on top of them so I can do some thread chasing, but not on this one. What's your uh, favorite hollowing method? Did you use a rig? You know, um, I I do use one. Uh, it's a it's called a stabilizer. 
Trent Bosch makes it down in Colorado, uh -huh. and I've had that for 10 years, and it's really awesome. But I, I, I enjoyed this making this one, and it's, um, so it's done pretty much by hand, and uh, we're using a gouge with a very long left left wing, very long bevel. So, uh, or I, you can get in on something like that with a uh, with a detail gouge, uh, spindle detail gouge. So yeah. I pretty much went with a little bit like wider opening, much like uh, Richard. Um, I mean, most of my work and technique is inspired or learned uh, from him. So from Richard and uh, on this video as well, I used that kind of a long bevel on the on the ball gouge. And uh, it really works awesome, and uh, um, it's just a great tool to to like uh, top half of the this kind of enclosed parts. So, you know, the the big problem the using the gouge is that you get big shavings, and they're difficult to get out sometimes, especially with a really small opening. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's the advantage of having a hole in the side too. It it, it, yeah. it checks the shavings. <laughs> but I don't have a compressor to blast them out either. So it's yeah, I, I use a, a Lyle Jameson uh, style rig. It's very easy to use. Uh, it's kind of effortless, whereas doing it by hand um, for me it tends to be more of a white knuckle flight. <laughs> so we got three different approaches or two different mechanical hollowing methods and uh, and then two pots made with uh, regular gou with gouges. Yeah, gouges and scrapers. Yeah, scrapers. Yep. Gouges and scrapers. Yeah. yeah. Natural edge bowl. That was probably my idea. I don't know. <laughs> I like natural edge bowls. Yes. Well, then your bowl doesn't have a natural edge. Uh, it does. It's it's in the vertical plane. I, I just you know arrange it vertically for uh, presentation since it's not a unlike a Richard. It's not a practical piece. It's a more artistic. But uh, I was real successful with this crotch capturing that flame. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. piece of wood, that's for sure. Richard, you've made that one a lot, I think, that bowl. Uh, I used, well, yeah, 40 years ago, we went through a batch of making thin um, uh, thin natural edge bowls, I think, but I haven't done any really since the mid or the early 80s. They just, again, haven't really sold So in, in my market. Um, but it's uh, with that particular bowl, it walked, it went almost... Uh, football shaped. I mean, it became substantially longer than wide, um, and was likely to fall over uh, because it was the balance got all wrong. I wasn't that pleased with it as a bowl because it, it when I looked at which I comment on in the video, I think um, because it it lurched over the, the yes, it just wasn't balanced on the rim. Um, but it's found a good home, so somebody liked it, not me. But anyway. <laughs> It, it lives not too far away. So. Uh, Sam, how about you? What did, what's going on there? I can't quite uh, see in the picture. It, you know, that, that bowl is rather shallow. It's, uh, again, another uh, piece of box elder. And I've, I've been very lucky to have some enormous box elder burls, like two or three feet in diameter. I've got a lot of videos cutting those up with a chainsaw. And it's always a challenge. You know, I try to make a hollow form to begin with, but if I can't, you know, it ends up something like that. Uh, pretty typical, and they've been good sellers. And uh, you know, one comment about the hollow forms, I've sold a lot of hollow forms, but they become urns. And yeah, it's, it's just a good seller. And I do some thread chasing in those, but not, not much else to say about that bowl. It's a nice piece of box elder. Yeah. And yeah. Thomas, have you got a bead around yours? Uh, quite like yeah thank you um uh, yeah it's uh i believe that it's box elder as well um they're not uh, by any means common here uh but i have a friend arborist and uh he helped me get those few logs of it and he said it was it was box elder so i have to trust him i guess uh but yeah it was a uh, uh, turn uh, the the tree fell uh, I believe in summer or something like that, and uh, the 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 bark just wasn't staying on, uh, and uh, so I removed it and uh, painted the rim, but uh, kept the, the like the waviness, the natural edge part of the of the of the shape, let's say, of the rim, 
and uh, just to like since it was green wood to emphasize the movement and it was actually quite a bit of movement um it shifted the the ba the, uh, the balance of the like the foot it was on the right so uh, not in the center anymore on the big one especially so just to put the bead on so it kind of uh, accentuated the the movement a little bit so i still have it I didn't sold um but i think I'll, probably wife will keep some flowers in it or anything like that <laughs> so that was another good one where we got really four different pieces similar and there was uh, uh i can't remember whether i put beads up the outside of that i think i might have done uh, that produced a few critiques should we say odd remarks so i think there are a couple of beads we got on we got we got people thinking which was the main thing so. yeah yes i think you did so we got pop fit box project number eight that would me that would be me yes okay uh, so talk to yours uh well yeah mine was um how should i say this it was inspired i've uh i forgot the name of the turner um he made this kind of similar shape uh that was also carved on the on the lid um but I had in mind a slightly different approach. And uh, usually the, the orange works well with uh, English walnut like and uh, the dark chocolatey color. And I really like that. Uh, but on this one particular just didn't work at all. And um, I did try to put the, the bluish one color as well inside, uh, but didn't like that either. I did a video after that as well. And um, I just removed everything, so it's a nice walnut without any color. So I had was to change ben, my mind. Was that Benoit Averly? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of his demo pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, Very nice. nice piece. Yeah. So you say you took the orange off that after after the picture? Yeah, yeah, took it all off. So now <laughs> it's uh, in uh, in Netherlands, so in the new home. Richard, that's a box you've made lots of times, I think. Well, not that particular one, yes, but that shape, yes, more or less. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that shape, I mean. Yeah. Yes. I have to pick up your journalist. <laughs> um, yes, um, fairly common. I think with that one, it didn't come out quite as uh, I was thinking in the first place. Um, it uh, there was, and I, I tend with a lot of these demo, a lot of these videos, I tend to pick bits of wood which are going to throw up problems uh, as I see them so there was uh, there were splits to get rid of and uh, so I get rid of what I don't want and then see what I can do with what I've got left which always brings us back to drawing um, so that's partly probably why I don't do a huge amount of drawing um, and so that that came up very nicely as a fit and that's gone to um, uh, that's in America now so or it's on its way I think it's about to be delivered so um, yeah, I was pleased with it as a, as a as a fit and as a box, and it was going to be part of a whole group. But when somebody wants to buy something, then they get it, and uh, <laughs> the group will be made up of some other bits. Sam, how about yours? The acorn box um, really requires a little bit tighter lid because ordinarily it sits on its side, and you can't have a loose fitting lid. So it kind of lent itself to the idea of a, a pop connection, pop fit. And it's pretty tight, but it makes a nice a nice pop when you take it apart. Th this allowed me to do a little texturing. And the texturing on the top of it is from a, a Wagner texturing tool. He's a, a Utah turner. I'm not sure if he's still around. But um, and I also did a little carving on the very bottom of it, uh, that little thin element there at the bottom. So that was fun to do. Good, good project. Very burl from all of them that I'd harvested at, at my church. And it's, it's a box I make a fair number of them. And the shape is reminiscent of probably something I got out of Richard's book. Uh, I like that. I like that particular shape. Nice shape. Yeah. I think one of the criteria here was to have a pop fit, wasn't it? We yeah, wanted yeah. it always taking the lid off. No. Did everybody achieve that? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Not quite as I would have liked, but anyway. 
<laughs> I had a better demo in the intro, I seem to remember. So. Yeah, the yeah. Christmas holiday ornaments. I'm sure that was probably my idea because I think uh, Richard and I had some some side conversations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I had a clue what I was doing there. <laughs> Well, that uh, candle holder, that's the one that's come came around in our coffee hour quite a few times. Yeah, I think absolutely. Bert, that's Bert, that Bert, DeLisle's, Bert DeLisle's idea. Yeah. yeah. And we see a lot of the uh, sea urchins, but that's a pretty nice sea urchin there, Sam. It yeah. is. And I like the gold on that. Yeah. yeah. Really nice. Yeah. I can't get away from just a traditional kind of an ornament when I think of a, a Christmas ornament. And I, and I have turned Christmas trees and the bell. I've turned lots of those kind of ornaments. Um, but I'd never really done the gold leaf, uh, and that's real gold leaf on on the urchin. I'd never done that before, so it's got a finial, and yeah, happy with that. Very, very nice. And Thomas, uh, Thomas Lab, that's a tree, and uh, is the ball hollow? This is kind of a similar to uh, that Sam made, but obviously it's out of wood, and uh, I'm not very good at these kind of uh, ornaments. Uh, uh, it's not sort of a, maybe a tradition to to make those here, um, but I really like the the tree one. Um, we used to make these uh, in school as well, so uh, it's always nice to to remember those things. So, okay, I did something else with these too. I put together each of your uh, pieces into one uh, one frame here. So here's all of Sam's pieces. Now that we take a quick look at this, I think it's a you when you look at this you can see oh yeah this is one guy's work i think yeah it is <laughs> it, have you looked at them this way you, you know one one thing i would say over the years i've been turning since about 1988 or so i've never really settled on a signature piece you know you you mention this turner or that turner and and something comes to mind and I, I've really never spent a lifetime turning one thing, and you know it's 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 fine. I like to do that. It's uh, you know, it's, it's given me a lot of variety, and I don't know, jack of all trades. Well, I still see a, a a family resemblance between all of these. But you get yes, it's a it's an overall style and approach, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's Sam's. Uh, there's Mike's. Mike's has a pretty wide variety between pieces that are highly regulated and pieces that are really very free. Yeah, that's uh, that's me. I'm kind of all over the board since I'm not a production turner. I don't sell my work. I don't have a, a series, never create a series of anything. And uh, with the emphasis on videos over the last eight or nine years, it's like every week it's a new project. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then it's kind of one and done, and you move on, and then after a few years, you can come back and revisit revisit the videos that were that were popular and do another variation. <laughs> There's Richards. Again, I see a family resemblance among these two, uh, particularly in your fondness for green wood. Yes, yes, yes. I've got well. I had to come to terms with green wood very early on in my career because the. Um, I was living in, in Devon in the west of England. The motorway came through and the contractors bought every stick of dry timber in every mill, every timber yard. <laughs> and uh, suddenly we had to start rough turning bowls, or I say we, I think there were only two bowl turners that I knew of. At that, or there was me and a fellow just up the road who went back to plumbing after a, a year <laughs> or so. I just wish I'd, I'd thought of having... Uh, leaving three little feet on the bowl earlier on because I would have, I would have worked green wood and that would have been my signature piece. Um, and as it was, I I ended up kind of just um, using mostly claret ash uh, for bowls and uh, that, was that. But I've always gone for simplicity, um, and uh, which I think is probably more difficult than smothering it with beads and that kind of thing. You. you it's uh, people think simple is very easy, but I never find it it's that easy. Just getting the curves just right. So there's Thomas Labs group. Well, this is a very coherent group as well, though. It has the same kind of coherence uh, uh, that that Richard does. So I find that pretty interesting that you and Richard are are uh, you, there's very much a family resemblance in the work. Uh, Mike and oh. Sam are all over the place with making lots of different things and lots of different approaches. 
and and you two guys seem to have approaches that work well for you so you apply the same approach to each new problem well i think that's that's what you do as a professional if you're making a living at it you you're going to have something which you can repeat which is easy to make yeah. with material which looks good you know you're not you're not looking for challenges or at least i'm not <laughs> <laughs> No, I like a good challenge, uh, but um, but I also uh, I'm quite influenced by by Richard as well. So uh, I do try to uh, like it's a wrong word like uh, find your, your like your own voice or your own style. But uh, it's sometimes that that's quite kind of difficult to do uh, when all the shapes are taken and uh, um, you just have a you know like a ball shape and there's only that you can do with that uh a few things you know and to still to be useful and that's the the most important part in my at least uh work uh, so i can uh, or either sell it uh, after or use it myself so if i don't accomplish that then it's kind of either in a, in a trash or a, uh maybe just for somebody who just like to watch it you know that particular item so well, there's a very clear voice going on in the pieces in your in these three pieces, or these three photos that you sent in the in, in the first place. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's, uh, it's kind of I was um, pushed into that, and uh, I really like making this kind of you know you you zoom out, um, you put the music on on the stereo, and uh, you you set off to make um, try to make similar items as as best as as possible, and. Uh, I just enjoyed that kind of process, and uh, um, yeah, I think that kind of shows. And uh, it does, yeah, it does show. It does, and there's no there's, if uh, even with your simpler bowls, there's no way they would be mistaken for mine, or vice versa. Yeah. Those are definite, definitely different. Or if you take the one front right, um, I might do a, a similar kind of bowl, but that's that's definitely not one of my bowls, and it would be one of Tomislav's. So. Yo, yo. Thank you, thank you. We looked at all the pieces. Um, I thought it was a wonderful exercise. I really enjoyed watching the videos. Or are you going to carry on with this, or are you done? Oh, we'll continue. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna... I'm quite happy to carry on. I think it's a good exercise. It's a um, uh, good opportunity to show, yes, exactly what we set out to do, show different approaches to the same task. And, and I think remotely through emails, we've, we've learned to figure out who, who's next up in the rotation and try to get the idea out soon enough so we can all get the, the proper piece of wood or timber and have time to think about it and fit, fit it into life. <laughs> so I don't think we need to produce something totally different every time we you know you can start mm -hmm. saying, you know, you can do another wide rim bowl and just see what different things you can do this time, which yeah. I think we feel like doing. Another box, or I'm sure we're doing more boxes, more this and that. So, yeah. I mean, I'm really pleased and like uh, how much we've done. And uh, actually, John, when you show the complete picture of our work, uh, it's actually quite a lot. And I haven't noticed, uh, to be honest, that we actually turned that many items. So, you know, one really nice part of this is it's one less idea I have to come up with video. <laughs> I, you know I, lo I love it but it, it's been so much fun and you know to get to know I've, I've known Mike probably better than the rest and we talk on the phone once in a while um, but it's just been fun to get to know Thomas Love and, and Richard a little bit better and and that's been great for for me as a turner. Did it ever occur to you guys to put out the information of what you're going to make next out to, to the world before you make it and let the people who are watching the videos participate and take their own shots at it. That's exactly why it's not done, John. <laughs> <laughs> we might get upstaged. <laughs> get far too competitive. We're, we're very territorial, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Give, exactly. give them two yeah. days' notice and see what they can manage for us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've come to the end of it, I think, unless somebody's got some something else they want to say. Well, thank you for doing uh, for coming up with the uh, the questions, John. Yeah, uh, exactly. Thank you for, your, thank you for your attention. Useful. It's been a, it's been a very fun afternoon for me.
Wood shop. Thank God for wood. 